Hi YouTubers. Now today I thought it was about time that I did another one of them sort of fossil things that I do now and again. And today we're going to be looking at ammonites, probably the most famous of all the all the uh, fossils. And of course they live for a massive amount of time and subspeciated beautifully into various different species obviously. And they also swam in the open seas. They preserved very well because they are of course shelled creatures and for this reason they make a really good index fossil. Living no more than each species living no more than a few million years. We can find that if you find a certain type of ammonite in your layer of stone you can then go to your index fossils, index of the fossils and find out which sort of period of stone you're looking at. Um, so they're terrific things for that reason. This particular one is a Jurassic, uh, I'll put it up close so you can have a good look. It's a Jurassic species uh, from the Dorset coast. Uh, this is Astrocerus obtusium and it's around about 180 million years old. So, very, very nice. It's been varnished in its preparation. But um, it's that lovely little fossil there. I love those. Beautiful, I love the ribs. The ribs really make a, really make an ammonite. Now, I tried to do this video in 10 minutes, many times. Oh yes, but uh, I found it's impossible. So, this is going to be an introduction to ammonites and the second video is going to be a showing of a bit of my collection here as well. Now, these guys, <clears throat> Uh, go back in mythology a long, a long way. In the times of the ancient Egyptians and, and Greeks, the god Amon had horns. And they found a lot of these, these uh, curly hill horns, but they found a lot of these uh, stones hanging about and thought, well, what are they? They're not, they're not by the coast and uh, they're made of stone. So they called them Ammonites or Ammonites, which basically means the stones of Amon, because it resembled the god. Here in Britain, uh, where these sort of things weren't heard of, they had another theory. And again, they were found in areas, not just on the cliffs, not just on the beaches, but also inland. And uh, they thought, well, they can't, and stone, of course, they can't possibly be uh, shells. So what are they? Big mystery. But of course, religion once again came to, came to its rescue. And a theory started, or a legend, that St Hilda, who was an abbess in Whitby Abbey in Yorkshire, North Yorkshire, they decided that uh, there was an infestation of snakes, and in a rage she turned them all into stone. So all these were basically stone and snakes that had curled up, and, and, but then didn't really explain why they didn't have um, any head. So uh, another legend uh, started on that, that St Cuthbert from Lindisfarne, he decided, he decided that he would curse them as well and, and all the heads fell off. Which, um, ooh, yes, very believable I know, but uh, there has to be a supernatural reason for everything. So that's the way it was in those days. Obviously we know better now, but uh, even up to Victorian times they were selling these things as the curled up snakes. Uh, but because they had no heads, uh, quite often they carved heads actually onto them and sold them as um, as these curled up snakes. So um, in fact, I might even put a picture of one. I'll find one and put one up. So I'll put that on. So what well, are ammonites? What really are ammonites? Well, cephalopods. Cephalopods being the group we find today of octopus, um, cuttlefish, squid. And of course the Nautilus, uh, that ancient of cephalopods also. But there was other cephalopods as well that are now extinct, uh, things like the Belamites, and of course these, uh, these wonderful ammonites. And when did they start? Well, way, way, way back. I'm going to start by showing you a piece of... Oh, bear with me, because it's, it's really heavy. Oh. I'm going to show you this piece. It's a, it's a big... Big plate from Morocco. Morocco has this tendency to, uh, if you can get that there somewhere, tendency to make these 
giant plates and things that basically in the black limestones of the sort of Atlas mountain areas and uh, it's a, all this is compressed ancient seabed. We're looking here at a plate that's four, 400 million years ago. This was the bottom of a sea. And I'm gonna bring it up close for two reasons. Firstly, I'm most interested in the plate itself, more so than the bits that they have stuck on. Now, this plate, as you can see, is highly polished. What's happened is the shells have become part of this sort of marbled rock. You can't, if you were to split this, they would just break with it. They are fused totally into it. And you might see some conical, you see those coned creatures next to some of the uh, more ammonite looking shells. And I'm going to try and bring it around so you can see. Well, what you've got here is goniotites, an early form of cephalopod, or probably even uh, more of a mollusk, really, because they are related to the mollusks. Uh, so what you have is these oh, conical creatures. I've got one here, which I hopefully can... Make. Once again, this has been fused, fused completely in. This is Northoracerus. I'm not sure I'm going to get this to... If I put my fingers in the way, it might focus on it. Ah, there we go. As you can see, this conical shape. Again, these sort of chambered creature. Uh, just like the ammonites. And they lived alongside them. Some, I say, in cones. And the belamites later would probably have been related to these orthoceras. Um, they're also known. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Trying to think what they're known as. I've got it. Bactrites. Bactrites, yes. Boring bit, so ignore that bit. Right. But what do you find if you do ever buy these things from Morocco is they do stick these pieces on, okay? But they are also carved out of other pieces of the rock. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with it. They do look fab, don't they? Um, it's just that they're not, they've, they've made grooves here and placed this on top. As I say, nothing fundamentally wrong with that. It is a fossil. It is a wonderful piece of stone just infested with some wondrous uh, marks and fossils. Oh, God, that's heavy there. But, uh, once again, we have, a, we have a small goniotite here. Again, around, you're looking around about 400 million years ago, but it's fused totally into this rock. And they, although they cut these in Morocco, they, they cut these stones out and chisel them out. In fact, that is the goniotite. The rest is just a, a, sort of the way they've cut it to be honest so um, be wary of that but once again they are what they say they are uh, these chambered creatures again these cephalopods okay so bear with me a second and I'm going to finish this piece off and then we'll go on to the next video okay so what can I tell you about a bit more about ammonites before we go on well, at the end of the Permian, around about 250 million years ago, there was a mass extinction, as, as I mention so often in my videos, and um, only about 10% of, of the sort of earlier ammonite species actually survived that. And they flourished then during the Triassic. But by the end of the Triassic, what we find is that only one species actually survived the extinctions at the end of the Triassic. But then they subspeciated once again, and during the Jurassic and up through the Cretaceous, massive subspeciation. This is this is their sort of primary areas. Um, by the end of the by the end of the Cretaceous, obviously there was the when the dinosaurs became extinct, they actually went extinct with them. But uh, not so the Nautilus, which was a, a similar creature, and we'll, we'll sh I'll show you a little bit about the Nautilus later. This is a Cretaceous Nautilus. But uh, we'll go on to the next video and have a look at that because I've got some great stuff to show you. Take care.